God bless you, beloved. I pray that you are well on today. I thank God for bringing us. We, As you look at it, we're in the 12th month of the year. And I mean, to look back at how far we've come and how far God has brought us, it is just amazing to see that we can stand here on today. And a few weeks ago, a few months ago, I preached a message about stop looking back. And the problem what happens is, is that we're so much... Um, and, and, and not looking back is not saying that you forget about the things that you uh, happen in your life, but don't dwell or don't linger on your past. Don't sit there and say, well, I mean, I used to be this way and things used to be like this. Stop looking back at that and start focusing on the fact that where God has you at now is probably the best place that you can ever be in your life. Give me Proverbs 23 and 7. Watch this. Proverbs 23 and 7. Read, sir. For as he thinketh in his heart. For what now? For as he thinketh in his heart. Read, sir. So is he. So then if you're going to continue to live your life about what was, if you're going to continue to live your life, I mean, a lot of old people say, well, when I was young and I used to do this and I used to that, they're stuck in a past. They're stuck in a place in their life where they can't move forward. But what is God saying now? What is God saying in this season? How is God looking to move us forward so that we can stop focusing on what was into what is now? God, I know I some of you like this you saying well I remember when I gave that large offering that was then but what are you doing now so you're still using what you did in the past to be your now and God is trying to move us forward and say that what you did now how many people have you brought to the Lord how many people have you led to Christ and you said that God this is my fruit I mean you're talking about this the saint that you brought in 10 years ago what happened for the next 10 years did you bring anybody else into God's house have you converted anybody and say the Lord I was responsible before giving your word and now bringing them into salvation but we're so stuck in the warp zone that we're always looking at things that happened back when but what about now and watch this the bible tells us in philippians 4 and 8 read sir philippians 4 and 8 read finally brother right now finally brother read sir whatsoever things are true so then now i'm giving you truth i'm telling you what you should be doing now stop trying to focus on what was and let's focus on now read sir whatsoever things are honest read sir whatsoever things are just so i'm trying to get you to a place that god is trying to get you to understand that when you start saying what was and not focusing on what is coming or what's now god lives in the present so he prepares our past should be a reflection of how we live in the present to prepare us for where we're going in our future. Because when you start saying, look at what I used to do, look at the things that I've been through, look at what God delivered me from, that should be a present indication that you're saying, I will never do that again. I remember how I got into that point. I was doing this and then I was hanging out with these people and it caused me to start doing this. But what God is trying to do now, he's trying to use your past as a remembrance, not for you to get stuck in that same place and saying, well, I, I remember this and this is how I used to do and this is the things I used to be. But God is trying to move us forward. Read, sir. Whatsoever things are pure. Read, sir. Whatsoever things are lovely. Read, sir. Whatsoever things are of a good report. Of a what now? Of a good report. So if my past is of a good report of all the things that I did then, then it should be a reflection of the things that I'm doing now. That's all the past should be reminding you. If your past has said, this is all the, this is how many times I've messed up. These are all of the mistakes that I made. But that should be a reflection of how you live your life now. Because if your mistakes cause you to get to this place that now you're doing better, then you should not be looking looking at your mistakes and saying, oh, I'm reminiscing on when I did that. I'm reminiscing on when I had this girl. I'm re reminiscing on when I used to drive this kind of car. But now God's saying that everything in the past should be a reflection of how we operate and live today, if it's according to his will. And that's where I want you to get to the place now to understand that you are trying to look for the things that cause you to err, the things that cause you to mess up. But God's saying that focus on the things that cause you to succeed. Call, focus on the things that cause you to be delivered focus on the things that cause you to prosper that's what I want you to do and so then when you're saying that you're looking back you're looking back for the things that how the children of Israel they were whining about how it was in Egypt they were complaining about what they did in Egypt but they forgot about they were in bondage they forgot about how God they cried out and said God God kept them in bondage for 400 years because of their disobedience but they forgot about all of that and start saying, well, this is what happened when we were in Egypt. But God has delivered you from that. In this year, look at the last 12 months and look at what God has done for you. For some of you, you have wavered and you have gotten off track. For some of you, you was once here and now you're, you're, you're over here, you're on the sideline. But I want you to remind yourself 
that this is the things that I used to do and God done delivered me. I want you now to start focusing on, I can't go back to that and get back on track and allow God to start getting your life back in order. And that's what this message is all about. This message is just a reminder. And that reminder is saying that, Lord, this is what you delivered me from. Lord, this is how you set me free. Lord, this is where you gave me my breakthrough. Lord, this is, I remember at this moment, this is how I came out of, that, that the chains fell off of my life. That's what God wants to remind us. And this message today is just a reminder that as you look back and if you're looking back of things that when you were once in sin and you're gloating off of that and you're shining your light on that that's not what God wants you to do he wants you to look at the things that you were falling short in and now using that as an example an ensign to say this is where I would never do it again and that's what this message is I want you to prepare your hearts and message I felt that it was a necessity for some of y'all to hear this message all over again and it simply says don't look back I'll be right back And I want you to turn with me into the book of Genesis, the 19th chapter. And when you get it, say amen. Oh, I forgot. There's nobody in the church. Well, when you get it at your home, I hope you can say it with me. Amen. In the book of Genesis, the 19th chapter, and I want to start reading somewhere about the 17th verse. Genesis 19 and 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, then he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O oh, not so, my Lord. Behold now, thy servant had found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto thee, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape there thither. It is not a little one, and my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape. That he's telling him to move quickly, escape thither. For I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore, the name of this city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew the cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back behind him and she became a pillar of salt. We're too busy trying to look back. And in this, in this storm, if you read in the book of Genesis, the 18th chapter, the 19th chapter, you'll see where God came down and he said he had to come see for himself because the sin that was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. And now he goes to Abraham and he tells Abraham and he said, Abraham, I'm, I, should I hide this thing from Abraham? And now he tells Abraham, he said, Abraham, uh, I'm going to come down and I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, Abraham realized that his nephew Lot sat in that city. And he goes and he tells the Lord, he said, Lord, if there be 50 righteous in the city, will you save the city? And he goes down and he said, Lord, peer venture, I don't, I, I don't mean to complain. I don't mean to be a bothersome to you. If there be 40 righteous in the city, will you save the city? And he went all the way down to 10. And he said, Lord, if there be 10 righteous in the city, will you save the city? He was saying in his mind, I, I don't know. I had to think about this thing. I don't know if there's uh, uh, 40 righteous. I don't know if there's 50 righteous. Oh, let me think, of th let think about this thing again. I don't know if there's 30 righteous in the city because there's so much sin in the city. God said I was going to destroy the city. But then he gets to Lot. Now Lot is saying that he's saying that, wait a minute, this is my home. This is a place where I live. This is a place where my family resides. And now God is coming to destroy the city. Now he's trying to plead with God and he's trying to say, well, if you're going to destroy the city, like I'm, sometimes I'm moving too slow. And he's saying, Lot, get out of the city because God is going to destroy the city. He sent angels down to come, put, to come and pull Lot out of the city. Now Lot is saying, well, I mean, this is going to be good if I go out into the wilderness 
maybe some evil thing will happen to me. Let me just go into somewhere that is similar, somewhere that is familiar. And is that sounding like somebody's testimony today? You're trying to get comfortable. If I can just go back to the way things used to be, if I can get to some type of familiarity, but then God's saying that I want you to be careful. I want you to pay attention because I have brought a plague upon this earth. I have caused things to happen. I've caused doors, doors to shut. I've caused cities to come desolate, but I am doing something because things will never again be the way that they used to be. And you see in this story where you're seeing Lot is pleading with the angels and he's saying, Preventure, my Lord, if I can just go do this little thing, if I can just stay here just a little bit longer, don't let things just go away. Don't let things just fall apart because he was too comfortable in the way that things used to be. And there's somebody, we're so comfortable in the way that things used to be. You're so comfortable in knowing that this is the normal. When can I get back to the beach? Or when can I go back to the movie theaters? When can I get back to doing things and just being social, or being a social butterfly? I love going to sitting at cafes and sitting on the sidewalk. I love going to be in stadiums and around large crowds. I love to doing things that I can go play basketball with my friends, but I want things back to the way that they used to be. And God's showing us now in this parable to the way that things are happening in 2020, that things will never go back to the way that they used to be. We're fighting for what is normal. We're fighting for things that are behind us. That's why the writer used to, they used to have this saying in cars, and I don't know if they do it anymore, but they send the objects in the rear view mirror are smaller than what's before us because it wanted to remind you that that is the past that's the things that are behind you those are things that are farther behind you and you need to stay focused on what's in front of you we got to now start looking at what God is doing God is trying to get us to start focusing on the bigger picture God is trying to get us to start looking at the way things are going to progress that's why when I was talking with these pastor friends of mine and that we were sharing about that church would never be the same Church will never look the same, but now we got to start progressing. But one thing for sure, the writer tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today forever. The word does not change, but the word is our example to show us what is to come. The word is our example to show us how we should conduct ourselves in times like this. And you'll see in this parable where that Lot was going through and he was trying to go back and trying to, trying to stay in the, the comfort zone. He was trying to stay in the, 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 the goodness of what was happening in his time. He was trying to stay in the things that seem normal but he did not want to go into the wilderness he did not want to go into the place of the unknown and God is trying to prepare us to get ready for the unknown we don't know what's happening tomorrow we don't know what's going to happen in our government we don't know what's going to happen next month if I had to take us back to this time next year nobody could have predicted what we would be doing right now a few weeks ago it was my son's birthday and I remember taking him into the store and I looked into the store and God just illuminated this visual picture I saw all of these people walking around the mall with masks on and I'm looking and I'm saying that could we would have imagined that we would live in a world in a time that people would walk around with masks on could we look and we and realize that we're in a time where people are standing six foot apart nobody is embracing each other nobody is shaking hands nobody is cuddling because we're saying that we're in a space where it's time to social distance. God is trying to get us prepared to what's coming. And we're so busy trying to look back at the former that we're not preparing on what's coming. And I'm saying to myself that God showed us in the book of Genesis, the 19th chapter. And I'm going to start back at the 17th verse. And it says, and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Here's the instructions that he gave him. He said that I want you to hurry up and get out of this city. I don't want you to stay here any longer. I don't want you to go to any place that's familiar, but I want you to go to the mountains. When you read on down in the text, you'll see where Lot is trying to compromise from the instructions that God had given him. He was saying, can I go to this other city? Can I not go so far away? But because he wanted to remind himself of something that was familiar. How many of us still trying to remind ourselves of something familiar? We're still saying that this is what I used to do. This is how I used to act. These are the places I used to go. We're trying to stay in a place where something is familiar. You can't go back into the lifestyle that you used to live. You can't keep doing the same things that you used to do. Oh, this is how I was when I was a teenager. I used to go to the club and boy, would I cut a rug and I would be the first one on the floor and I'll be the last one to leave. You're still remembering the past, but now the past 
past is the past. Stop looking at the past and start focusing on what God is trying to take you. You're too old to start kept saying that what you used to do. You ain't got the bottle of a Coke bottle no more. You got to look at it saying, this is where I am now. Start using what God has given you and start using it to help somebody else. You're still trying to remember your life as the past. You sit down and have conversations with older people and they'll start saying, I remember when. They never talk about the future. They said that this is how things was and this is what I used to do and this is how I used to look. Oh, when I used to have hair on my head. Oh, I remember when I used to get dressed like that. Oh, I remember when I had the body of a, of a football player. Oh, I remember when I used to get dressed like this and I used to can walk like that, but I can't do those things no more. They're still trying to live in the past. God is trying to elevate our thinking. He's trying to elevate our process, our thought process, and saying that you can't keep living in the past. That's not you anymore. You got to look at what God has placed you at now. Look at what God is doing in your life now and embrace that saying that this is what God is doing for me. This is how I'm going to live my life. And now I'm going to stop leaving those things that were behind me and I'm going to leave it in the past. Your past should be your example of saying what you should not do anymore. The past should be remind you of the mistakes that you made saying that I won't do that no more. The past should tell you this is what, so, what happened then that you make sure that it won't happen now. That's the past. Leave it in the past. Stop trying to relive the past. Stop trying to do the things that you did yesterday, yesteryear, yester month, and said that this is now my present and I'm focusing on my future. Watch this, the 17th verse. And it came to pass when they brought them forth abroad, who was they? These was the angels that he said, escape for thy life. This is a fight for your life. You can't get so close. You can't get so comfortable where you're trying to say that this is the way things used to be. And you're not following the instructions that God has laid out for us. God said that I want you to get into your houses, into your doors. He did the same thing in the book of Exodus. He said that I want you to get into your house and I want you to put the blood over your doorpost. And when you put the blood over your doorpost, don't come out. Don't open that door because I am sending a death angel. See, God is telling us the same thing now. Open your Bibles. Read the scriptures and see what God is doing. He's trying to show us that he's saying, stay in your houses. Don't try to get like everybody else. Don't try to get back into the social butterfly being around the crowd. Stay in your house and put the blood over your doorpost. Now it's your time to pray to God. Now it's your time to hit your knees and say, God, what are you doing? I'm living in a time that, Lord, this is nothing like ever before. I'm living in a time that, Lord, I don't know if I'm ever going to be the same again. Lord, I don't know what you're going to do, but what I do know is that when next happen, I'm going to be ready for next. I do know that when things change, I'm going to be ready for change because I am still connected to what you are doing. We're so busy trying to look back. I want you to stop looking back. The back is past tense. And now I want you to start looking at what's coming in front of us. Start looking at, Lord, what are you doing next? Lord, I want to be connected to you. Lord, I'm going sit, to sit on my knees. I'm not going to move till you talk to me. Lord, I'm going to sit here and pray to you till you give me instruction. Lord, I want to sit here and I want you to give me directions on which way to go, what steps to take. This is what I want you to do for me. But stop trying to get back to what things once was. It'll never be the same. It'll never look the same. Children now are being homeschooled. They are doing what's considered virtual school. Families are in the house together that before this happened, people did not communicate. They did not sit down and eat dinner together. But what God is doing, he is connecting things back together. We got so busy, caught up in the world system, Chris, and we start getting so caught up into trying to be, live the fast life. We start trying to continue to put God on the back burner and God put the whole world on pause. And he said, I want you to start focusing on me. I want you to pay attention to what's going on. You go places, you go to cities now and you're looking, you're trying to relive what it used to be, but it's not the same anymore. You're trying to go back to that same old spot, but it's not the same anymore. You're trying to go back to to get around the same people, but God done delivered you from the people. It's not the same anymore. God done delivered you, and you're trying to go back to that old childhood state of mind, and you're saying that, wait a minute, it's not the same no more. When you go back to those old, when you go back to those school reunions, and you're trying to relive those old days, but it's still not the same anymore. People are not the same anymore. Friends are not the same anymore, because things are not the same. God's trying to get you into a place to start looking for it. It's time to progress and to move forward. But watch this. And he says, 
Escape for your life. Escape for your life. Look not behind you, neither stay thou in the plain. Don't stay in that same place no more. But watch this. When the Bible tells us, watch this in the book of Luke, the 17th chapter, in the 32nd verse, it says, remember Lot's wife. Why do you remember her? Because she looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. Stop looking back. Stop trying to look back at what once was. Stop looking back at what things, how they used to be. It would never be the same. Follow, follow me here. Turning your Bibles now to Philippians, the third chapter. And I want to start reading at the 13th verse. Philippians 3 and 13. And you're going to see now why I told you, it says, remember Lot's wife. Why I remember her? This is a memorial to say that the instructions was don't look back. I want you to start looking forward. Don't look back. See, all of that was sin. All of those things that caught you, those things called you to, 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 to get into a place where you, 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 you were not focused on God, but you was focusing on other things. And he said, don't look back. But watch this in the book of Philippians, the third chapter, the 13th verse. It says, brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Come on. Behind. And reaching forth unto the things which are before. This is what God is trying to get us to do today. Watch this, the 14th verse. And it says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's why I say, the writer says, when the writer tells us in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then they can hear from heaven and I will heal their land. God's trying to get us to pray more. God is trying to get us to seek his face more. God is trying to get us to commune with him more. But we're so busy worrying about the election. We're so busy worrying about who's going to be the next president. We're so busy worrying about trying to cast a vote. But nobody is worrying about, Lord, I need to get closer to you. Lord, what are you doing in this season? Lord, what are you doing around my town? Lord, what are you doing in my community? Lord, what are you doing in my household? God saying, I want you to press toward the mark. See, we're trying to worry about things that are happening on the world system, but God said, I want you to worry about things that are happening on the kingdom system. God is trying to get our mind to be elevated into heavenly paces. God is trying to get our thoughts to be kingdom minded, but you're so busy trying to worry about the world system and you're forgetting about what God is doing in the heavenly realm. It says forgetting those things that are behind you. It's time to put it behind you, but press towards. Watch this. Go back to Genesis 19 and 7, 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for your life. I want you to realize that this is your life. I want you to know that, God, your life depends on it. Your life depends on it. Your life depends on it. Your family is depending on the decisions that you make. Your life depends on it. You got to stop looking back. It says, look not behind you. Look not behind you. Turn with me to the book of Luke 9 and 62. Watch this, Luke 9 and 62. And it's telling us in Luke 9 and 62, it says, no man put his hands to the plow. Looking back is fit for the kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, no man, no man, no one man, no man, putting his hand to the plow and looking back. Stop looking back. Stop saying I can't wait till things turn to normal. Stop saying this is what I used to do. Stop trying to remind yourself about God has delivered you. God has set you free. Stop saying when I was on crack. Stop saying when I was an alcoholic. Stop saying when I was a drug dealer. Stop saying when I was fine and sexy. Stop saying when I was strong in this. Stop saying this and stop saying that. Stop looking back and start looking at what God got you at. This is where you at now. Because he said that no man putting his hand to the plow. Oh, yeah, God saved me. Yeah, God has filled me with the Holy Ghost. But then you're still looking back. Yeah, oh, remember who when I used to wear my miniskirts. Oh, remember when I used to put on my tank tops. Oh, remember when I used to drive my car and I used to have the top flip back and my hair used to blow in the wind. Stop looking back. Those are the former days. Thank God that he's kept you. Thank God that he's allowed you to see another day. Thank God that he's allowed you to be alive. Stop looking back. 
I remember when we was children, my dad used to tell us stories about the things that he did as a kid. And he would tell us the stories about what him and his brothers would do. And he would tell us these stories and he would remind us of the things that he did as a kid. But we would take those stories and we would relive what he did as a kid. And I mean, and I mean we were very devious as children. And I, we would take the things that he said he would do how when he was working, um, he was a little kid and he was working and his brothers would leave him and he couldn't go and work and make money. So what he did, he would tie a string to his toe and tie a string to one of his other brother's toes. So when they would get up out of the bed, then they would yank his toe and it would wake him up. So we went, we went and took it to the extreme. We would tie each other's toes together, and then we would come in the room with pots and pans, and we would tell them, say, get up, get up, get up, the house on fire. And they would get up out of the bed in front, and being frantic and trip and fall over the floor, and we thought that that would be so funny. He would tell us about how he would play pranks on his brothers and put a match between their toes, and he would light it. Oh, but see, when he told us that, we took it to the extreme. We took matches and put it around the sock, and we would light this one match, and it would light around the whole sock, and the whole leg would be on fire we just took it to the stream but when we was li reliving his past look at what it caused us and from that it caused some of us to have scars on our body right now that because of something that was in the past we brought it to our present caused us to be scarred for the rest of our lives there are things that you are doing today that you are doing in your life that is causing you because of your past to leave a scar that this car is on you for the rest of your life. And sometimes you got to let the past go because when you continue to live in the past, it's causing you to bring that past and be a present issue in your present. And now what God is saying that you're, you, you, because you're holding the past, remember Lot's wife. Remember what she did. I gave them instructions and I said that I want you to escape for your life. This is your life. I want you to act like as of today that your life depends on it. I want you to go forth throughout today and say my life depends on it. I want you to say that no matter what happens, I can't continue to live my life this way because my life depends on it. I want you to, and this is my last script, I'm getting ready to close. I want you to get into the book of Isaiah and I want you to turn to the 43rd chapter. And I want you to act like that your life depends on it. And I want you to turn with me to Isaiah 43 and 18. Watch this. I want you to act like today is the day that God is about to do some things in my life. I want you to say that I'm no longer again going to look back. I'm no longer again going to hold on to my past. It's time to let it go. Watch this. In the book of Isaiah 43 and 18, it says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Watch this, the 19th verse. Behold, I will do a new thing. Somebody said with me. God is about to do a new thing. God is about to shake your core. God is about to turn some things upside down. He said, I want you not to hold on to the things of the past, but I want you to get ready to get ready to get ready to get ready. God is about to do a new thing. God is about to take some things and turn it upside down. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? And I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers and the desert. God is about to call the things. He said, I'm about to make a wilderness in the desert. I'm about to bring water in the desert. He said, I'm about to bring rivers in the desert. He said, I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. See, that wilderness is the desolate place. That wilderness is that place where you're saying, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? He said, I'm going to make a way out of it. In the desert, there's no water. If you ever been to the desert, I remember we went to the desert in an Arabian country. And fool, as you in that desert, I mean, it's just like a sea of sand that you don't see the end of it. And we rode in this desert and we rode for mile after mile after mile. And there was no water. All it was was sand and sun. And we were sitting there in the car and they stopped at one point and we got out the car and it was 130 degrees in the sand. It was so hot that we couldn't pull off our shoes and we was walking through the sand like, ooh, ah, ah, ah. But look at what God is saying. He's saying that, behold, I will do a new thing. This is a moment that you need to be shouting right now. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. This is what you need to say. God is giving me a second chance. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Somebody need to start smiling and said, I'm coming out of this. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Somebody said, I got hope again.
He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Somebody said, I can live again. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Somebody said, I'm coming out of this. I'm not going to sit here in this place any longer. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. And now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? God is going to do this thing. And when you're going to be saying, when did this happen? God, when did this happen? And he said, I will even make a way in the wilderness, in rivers, in the desert. You're sitting there right now. You're saying, I don't know how I'm going to come out of this. Read that text. Read that text. I'm going to do a new thing. And I'm going to bring you out of this wilderness. I'm going to show you how to come out. I'm going to show you that I'm going to bring water into the desert. And rivers, it flows. <laughs> it flows. This is what God is going to do. He's going to allow rivers to flow. And now watch this. In your life when you felt that you couldn't make it out, watch the rivers are flowing. I think my mother got a song. He said, rivers are flowing. And it's in the sanctuary. Now is your time more than ever. You got to stay connected. You can't just sit there and say, well, I'm going to watch later. I'm going I'm to I'm catch a few minutes and then I'm going to watch TV over here and I'm going to have the service on over here. You got to stay connected. Because God is doing a new thing. And if you miss it, you're going to miss your moment. If you miss it, you're going to miss your season. If you miss it, you're going to miss your breakthrough. Stay connected. Stop straddling the fence. Every time this ministry comes on air, stay connected. Every time there's a meeting call online, stay connected. Every time that your leaders say this and they say that and thus said the Lord, stay connected. Because you're going to miss your moment. You're going to miss what God is doing. He said, behold, I'm doing a new thing. But you're going to miss it because you're still in the old. You're going to miss it because you're looking back. And if I had to put a title on this message, it would simply say, stop looking back. Ha. Stop looking back. God is doing a new thing. Open your eyes and see. I'm making a way out in the wilderness. Open your eyes and see. I'm doing a new thing. Ha. Open your eyes and see I'm bringing water in the desert. And now we go hold it right there. Stop looking back. God is doing a new thing. And I'll close with this. Father, open the eyes of the people so that they may see. And knowing that you're doing a new thing in this season, in this hour. Because, Father, you told us to stop looking back. You gave us a reminder. We read it in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis. And you reminded us in the New Testament in the book of Luke. You said, remember Lot's wife. You gave them perfect instructions. You say, escape. Because your life depends on it. And don't look back. So I remind you today, stop looking back. God is doing a new thing. Hold fast to his profession. Hold fast to what God is giving us. And watch things go start working for your good. I pray that you were blessed with that message today. And as you understand something, that when you find yourself in a place, and I minister on how that the uh, uh, Lot's wife, she was looking back because what God did, he came and he says that I am going to destroy these cities because of sin. But she was holding on things in her past. And what the things that she was holding on from her past caused her to lose her promise. Your past should not be able to lose your promise, but it should promote you to your future. And that's what God wants us to see today. As you take this message, hold on to the words. And as you stop looking back, start focusing your attention. God, what do you have for me to do now? God, what do you want me to do in this season? I know that the 
church building is closed, but I am the church. And now how I'm going to live my life in this season, I'm making sure that I stay connected to every time my ministry come online, I'm going to be right there. Every time that is an opportunity for me to sow my seed, my offering, my gift, my financial gift, I'm going to do so. Every time that there's a meeting call and I have to be on a Zoom class, I'm going to do it. Because now I remember where you brought me from. I remember of how far I've come. And I would no longer live in my past, but I'm going to live in my present. And I want to thank you so much today. And I want you to be a blessing to God's house. And as you sow your financial gift today, God is going to use that as a sign to say, you know what? I ain't looking back. I remember when I didn't have money and I prayed and I said, God, if you give me money, I'm going to do right with it. And now that God is doing that, be guilty of giving your seed. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, it says that when you give a financial gift, some of y'all don't even know what seeds are and your seeds are your financial gifts. So I got to make it plain to you. And it says that you are a witness that Christ still lives. And so then I don't need money. I need the one who gives me the money. I don't need to, to say that uh, I need a doctor. I need the one who guides the doctor. And that's you, Jesus. And so then if I am a witness that you live by me giving my offering today, then I know that you're going to give me more. And so let's be guilty of sowing your financial gift today. The information is on your screen. You can give by four ways. Go on the website. The information is you log on to the website and you follow the instructions to give. Or you can do it by picking up the phone, dialing this 1-800 number. And when you dial that, there's operators standing by and they will guide you through the process where you can give your seed. Or you can do it text to give. So the information is there text the word tithe or offering. Some of you ain't tithe in a long time and you can spell it by T-I-T-H-E. Come on, I'm being real. So then now be guilty of tithing today and text the word tithe or offering and follow the prompts on the screen. And last way you can give is by cash app. So then give by cash app. Those of you who know what cash app is, give it, give it by cash app and you will get an immediate receipt. Thank you guys so much. God bless you. And I can't wait to see what God is going to do in your future. And if I haven't told you lately, I'll tell it to you today. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it.